Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heals. Heals being an acronym for Health, Education, Advocacy, and Leadership of Southern Nevada. We're here in the studio today with Becky Torres, the owner of the West Central Territory of Bright Star Care right here in Las Vegas. And we're going to learn a little bit more about what she does to care for our community. If you're new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast live in the studio here on Thursdays at 10 a.m. And we rebroadcast out on YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes, pretty much every one of those little uh, social media platforms that's available. And it gets inserted into our Heels Headlines newsletter, which delivers in your inbox every two weeks. We like to bring in leaders of healthcare here in Southern Nevada, learn what they're doing to improve the quality of care, that which is in the mission of Las Vegas Heels. And today we're going to talk to Becky about what she's doing to care for our community. Becky, welcome to the studio. Thanks, Dad. Good morning. Yeah. So before we dive in and get to know a little bit more about Bright Star Care, we want to get to know Becky. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You're pretty much a native of Las Vegas. Uh, tell us a little bit. So I moved here when I was five. My family moved here from Los Angeles. My dad said we are going to be here for six months. I promise. Just six months. We all said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all said that. Six months, maybe a year. And then we find Las Vegas is the most beautiful place on earth. Exactly. <laughs> So my family has been here since 1976, and we love it, obviously. Um, I went to school here, grew up here, um, went away to college for four years, and moved back after college, and met my husband here, raised our kids here. and. So you studied to become a teacher, and you taught for a couple of years. I did. It's quite a difference to go from education to healthcare, so we want to find out the why okay. uh, behind that. And and before you got into healthcare, uh, you were a stay-at-home mother. So tell us yes. a little bit about your career ladder. So when I moved back to Las Vegas, I became a teacher and I worked for the Clark County School District for four years. And when I had my son, who is now 19, I studied home and became a stay-at-home mom. And I did that until I bought Bright Star. And everyone always says to me, how did you end up owning a home health care company? And so my husband manages Trader Joe's. He um, was traveling all over the country for a um, regional vice president job, and we were all miserable. And so one day he went and said, I want to go back and manage a store. So he did that. And at that point, he said, you know, we should start a business, which meant I should start a business. <laughs> <laughs> and so on a hot August day, very much like it was last month, I sat on my couch and I literally Googled my way into owning a business. So... Bright Star wasn't the first one that you came across. You looked at a bunch of different franchises, but what made you land on buying the Bright Star franchise? So I think that one of the things that just kept coming back to me is wanting to do something to make a difference. And I felt like that every time it just, I believe in divine intervention and something just kept pulling me back to healthcare. And knowing that um, every day we could get up and, and make a difference in people's lives and do something that gives back to the community. And on really rough days, the joke around the office is I should have opened a yogurt shop, but, <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. And you know, it's, we've done phenomenally well. We've grown. I mean, we have over 180 employees and I think about, you know, seven years ago, it was two people, it was me and a branch manager. And I'll never forget the first phone call that we got saying, Oh, we have a client for you. And us running around the office going, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> and you've, kind of taken the market by storm. You've taken the franchise world by storm. You were recognized as the franchisee of the year. So tell us a little bit about that. So yeah, I was the rookie of the year and um, my first year being open. Um, it's it's very exciting. I mean, being a, a woman in this industry, a lot of my um, counterparts around the country are, are male or husband and wife teams. And I'm one of the only women, truly women owned ones. And um, I have a great support system. I had a meeting here last week and it was um, seven franchisees and four people from the corporate headquarters. And I was the only woman in the room. And um, I like that. I think it's exciting. Um, it's offers some challenges, you know, cause I still have to balance, you know, raising my kids and being a mom to them, but also, you know, coming in and, and making sure that we can, you know, play with the big boys. Yeah. And you've, been recognized or you've been covered in several national media, uh, including the Huffington Post and the, uh, what was it, the Business News Daily. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what was that article about? I think, you know, it was the journey about becoming a, you know, going from a stay-at-home mom to a business owner and, and how 
as a woman, you have to really balance a lot of those things. And, you know, I mean, it's that adage of, oh, you need to have it all. And, you know, I think it's some days you, you know, you're going to be the best wife and mother and other days you're going to be the best business owner. And it's figuring out how to be those for, you know, different times and, and having a great support system. And, you know, a lot of people that I employ are, are women and moms. And, you know, we know that, you know, when we get that phone call that we got a sick kid, we're, st- we're the ones that are going to have to leave the office to go and handle it. But we have each other's back. We support each other in that. And we know that, you know, I might have to leave to go watch my kid in a play, but I'm going to work a little bit at home that night or I'm going to work harder during the day. And so I, I think it's a really unique situation that we're in and, and figuring out how we we can be successful at doing everything without having to sacrifice ourselves and our sanity in the meantime. Being the owner of Bright Star Care gives you that flexibility. Tell us about Bright Star Care. What exactly is Bright Star Care? So we are a personal care home health company. So we don't do any Medicare and Medicaid. So we're a very unique hybrid. There's not a lot of people that do what we do in this space. And, you know, a lot of companies are just personal care agencies or they're Medicare home health companies. So for us, we are mostly private pay. We work with insurance companies and workers comp, but we kind of step in where Medicare and Medicaid step off. Gotcha. And so some of the other services, you talked about home health care, uh, personal care. Give us some scenarios of, of a typical day in the life of Bright Star Care. So I, I had this vision that when I opened that people would call us up and say, oh, my, my dad is getting discharged from the hospital next week. And we want to interview some companies, you know, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? And the calls that we get are, you know, Friday night at five o'clock saying, "Um, my dad's getting discharged in an hour. Help. I have no (laughs) idea what we need to do. And so we really are solution oriented and that's what we do. We, We come in and help families when they are at their most dire, dire times and really act as advocates for them and help them get set up in their home back to, you know, our, our ultimate goal is to get people better. And there's nothing greater than we had a, a family member that walked into our office a few months ago to invite us to her um, mother's 100th birthday. Wow. And she said, I, my mom would not be here if it were not for your team that got her here. And so it's those moments that we, we love that and that's what we strive for and that's what we really want to do. So you've got 180 employees that help you be different than other home health services. What other areas, what helps you differentiate from the others? There's a lot in town, but what helps you differentiate from the others? So we, the fact that we have two licenses, a a medic, you know, we do the skilled nursing side and the personal care side. So if somebody starts off just needing personal care and then they become, you know, sicker, need additional help, we're able to step in and, and flip that over to being more medical. And we have a director of nursing on staff. So that's huge. I mean, so we just do a ton of training. You know, we have something called field specialist where we have employed four people that are, you know, the the liaisons between our office and our families and, and our caregivers because it's a very lonely industry, really. You know, you're out there in a home one-on-one with the patient. You know, it's not like working in a hospital. If something goes wrong or you have a question that you have a team around you, you're working one-on-one with people. So we try to offer that support to help them thrive in, in a situation. And so, you know, people will call us up and say, I need extra training on this. We have a training room in our office, so we can bring them in and teach them how to use a Hoyer. We can teach them how to, you know, transfer somebody in a bed, all those things that it's very hands-on. And we really, really strive to differentiate ourselves that way. We're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about concierge medicine, which is one of my favorite topics. Uh, During our commercial break, you're going to hear some great messages uh, from two different sponsors, one being the Oquendo Center, which is a surgical training center right here in Las Vegas. A lot of people don't realize we train about 7,400 surgeons each and every year right here in Las Vegas, Nevada at uh, the Oquendo Center. And the next one's about our upcoming annual gala for Las Vegas Heels, the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Award. So enjoy a quick commercial break, and then we'll come back to talk a little bit about concierge medicine.
Join Las Vegas Heels as we celebrate the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards on Thursday, October 24th, 2019. Las Vegas Heels will return to the magnificent Four Seasons Hotel to recognize and celebrate six more honorees. Be sure to save that date again, Thursday, October 24th, and be on the lookout for your personal invitation. If you know a physician or healthcare leader worthy of recognition, consider nomination. Nominations open on May 31st. We look forward to seeing everyone at the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards on Thursday, October 24th, 2019. Welcome back to Inside Medicine. We're here in the studio right now with Becky Torres, the owner of Bright Star Care Las Vegas, who owns the franchise in West Central Las Vegas. We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, concierge medicine. It's becoming popular. Tell us a little bit about uh, concierge medicine and what you're doing in that that space. So when I first started Bright Star, I really had not even heard of it. And um, I didn't really realize there was a space for it, you know, how we were going to get into it. And um, one of the first times that it really came to my attention was a family here that had a, a mom that was at UMC Hospital and was dying and wanted to get her home. And they said, you know, we're going to do anything to get her home. And it took you know, all of us teaming together, we set up an ICU in her living room and she was able to live there for two months and, and live out her days. And um, they didn't want to stop treatment. So she, they didn't want to put her in hospice. Mm -hmm. So we came in and stepped in and were able to really help her and, and spend those last few, you know, months of her life, you know, surrounded by a great team. And so this is something that after that, I thought, gosh, nobody else really is doing this. Why not? And I had a situation over the summer, my 19 year old son broke his leg and ended up um, it, in the hospital having to have surgery and spent a few days in the hospital. And we had a great experience over at Dignity. It could not have been better. But I realized that I became, you know, the patient. I was on the flip side of this and sitting in the hospital and giving up my life for three days just to sit there with him when, you know, this is something that he could have been doing at home. And, and so I realized right then and there that, wow, this is, you know, hospitals, they, they want to get you out. They want to get you home. But what's going to happen when you get there? And so for us, we are really able, I mean, obviously it's it's expensive. I mean, you, you want to have a nurse around the clock. You know, that is something that we do, but it, it costs a lot of money. And for those families that can afford it and they want to have that high level of care, we're able to provide that. And one of the things that I said, I feel like airlines and healthcare are the last two places that we don't have like first class. I mean, you know, yes, you can sit in a first class seat in an airline and it's not really that great of an experience. Um, and I feel that healthcare is the same way. You know, you, here in Las Vegas, everything is VIP. You know, you get in a line for a VIP this, VIP that, you get, you know, door to door service, everything. Well, we don't have that in healthcare. And I feel like that's something that's so lacking. And so it's really an area that we're really focusing on building and, and having those people. Um, we, we have, you know, a lot of clients that really want to be at home and they need high levels of care. And we are able to step in and provide that. And speaking of the VIP service, we're in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have mm -hmm. 44 million people a year that travel through the destination. Now you're able to take care of patients in a hotel room as well yeah. as the home. Tell us a little bit more about that. So uh, it, I think this is such a, a great, you know, we are a huge tourist destination and we get calls all the time about, you know, I'm coming to travel here and, you know, they might have a health condition. For example, somebody that's a paraplegic or quadriplegic, they have certain medical protocols that need to occur when they're on vacation. And so we are able to step in and provide that service for them. And, you know, think about, you know, I, if you go on our website and we have Google reviews from people that have traveled here and said, you are my lifesaver. We were, I was had the best vacation because of the care that you guys were able to provide. And so I, you know, once again, my son, we had an Alaskan cruise this summer that was scheduled for my mom and dad's 50th anniversary. And he had to go on crutches and, you know, navigating something, a vacation like that. And it was very eye opening. And so once again, you know, we were able to go in and, and help families, you know, sometimes they want to bring grandma with them. But grandma doesn't want to go, you know, she isn't able to go out on this trip for, you know, the 15 hours that they are and they need somebody to help get her to bed. I mean, it's as simple as that to, you know, really extensive medical treatment. 
And so that's a unique service. Are you aware of any other agencies that are providing that? No, I am not aware of any. And so that's amazing because it helps somebody travel with a loved one that may need to seek out additional care and you're able to provide that. And I think that helps the destination that helps us with our mission as uh, Las Vegas to get more heads and beds as we call it. Exactly. Exactly. So besides that, what are some of the other trends that you're seeing out there in the healthcare space right now? Like, what do you see? You see things that many of us don't because you're hands on. What are some of the other trends that you're seeing? So the trends that I'm seeing are once again, you know, obviously with hospitals and insurance companies and it's getting people in and out much quicker than than in years past. And um, we have a shortage of of caregivers and a shortage of nurses. I mean, that's a that's a huge topic for us, you know, really trying to become an employer of choice here so we can bring in the best talent. And uh, you know, nurses I I wish my 17-year-old daughter would be a nurse. She doesn't want to or my 19-year-old son, they don't have an interest in it. And I keep saying, "No, do this. You could really, you know." And we Definitely need more nurses. We need more allied health professionals. We need more doctors. It's yes. just shortages everywhere. Yes, and I and I see the trend is that it's going to get much much worse. And I read an article in the New York Times the other day about a live-in caregiver there that's making one hundred and sixty dollars a day and is working you know eighteen hours a day because the person she's caring for has Alzheimer's. And you know you at some point somebody has to make a living wage, but we also have to care for our elderly. And and so it's this balance of how, how are we going to solve this problem? And I don't have an answer to it, but I think it's going to become a crisis for our country. So how does a family member realize or diagnose that they need home health services? How do we have somebody at home? We're doing our best, but it's now above our ability to deliver that care. How does, how do you discover that? It's the little things, you know, I mean, it's in a, often, you know, we have families that don't live here and they come over, you know, over the holidays and visit mom and they realize that, wow, mom hasn't had a shower or mom is forgetting things. You know, she's, she said something to me that she told me two minutes ago, or they'll go into the refrigerator and there's a lot of expired food. They notice they're not eating. They've lost weight. And um, so it's those little things that start occurring. And, and the problem is knowing when to bring in help because everyone's resistant to it. If I told you right now that somebody's going to be at your house helping you, you would say, no, I don't want that. And so it's the thought of them losing their independence. And this is something I do in my training when I talk to our caregivers is you guys need to understand that they're not, they don't want you there in the beginning. And, you know, eventually they're going to get used to it and you're going to be a a beacon of hope for them. But in the beginning, you know, and it's, you know, if somebody's really, really sick, it's easy to get care in there. It's when it's just starting to happen and, and they don't want somebody around them all the time. And I always say to family, start slow. You know, you don't need to start with having somebody there eight hours a day. You know, start with a couple hours, you know, get somebody used to the fact that, you know, a lot of the times it's the driving, you know, how many people should not be driving anymore and they don't want to take the keys away, but it's becoming a hazard. And so it, it, that's, that's one of the first things we see is the driving. Yeah. So when a family member discovers or realizes that they need to bring in a caregiver, what are some of the questions that they should ask that caregiver before making the hiring decision? Well, first of all, you need to hire a licensed agency. Um, I cannot tell you the horror stories about that I've seen with hiring somebody off of Craigslist. Um, You have no protection. You know, I I tell a story. We had a, a, we were signing up a client the other day and our caregiver walked in and the dog bit her. Mm. and he's, you know, the client says, oh, I'll pay for everything, and, you know, my person looked and said, you know, that's why we have workers' comp insurance. It's covered. Don't worry about it. You know, I mean, it's those type of things. Um, We had another family here in town that was hiring private caregivers, and they fired somebody, and they got sued for unemployment. Oh, jeez. You know, things like this that you don't even think about and realize. So the first thing is really vetting your agencies, and I tell everyone, you should interview two or three agencies. There's a lot of great agencies out there. I mean, there's, you know, some bad ones for sure, but there's a lot of great ones. And you need to interview an agency and see what works for you. I mean, it might be price driven. It could be the fact that, you know, you want to have a, a, you know, team that's really big. You might want to have a smaller team. It's, it's really those type of questions. And you need to ask and make sure that they're doing background checks on everyone. I mean, that's a huge thing. Um, we're required by law to do it. And um, we're required by law to TV test everyone. Um, the training, they ask them what kind of training they go through and what their level of experience are. 
And what happens if somebody, you know, calls out, you know, who's going to go wait, you know, are you going to leave mom laying there for a day because you don't have another person to fill that shift? I mean, all of those things that really are the type of, and you know, it's a personality match. I mean, you know, sometimes I, I say, sometimes I feel like a matchmaker more than anything because I meet a family member and I say, oh, I've got the perfect person for you. And, you know, I'm right a lot, but if I'm wrong, then they call up and say, that's not working. And then we're able to, you know, it might take two or three tries, but it's finding that right person that's going to make their lives better. When you have 180 employees, you're able to backfill yes. when you need to backfill. Yes. So we've covered a lot of territory here. Is there anything that we did not talk about that you want to make sure that our audience, and keep in mind our audience are primarily providers and other folks in the healthcare space. Is there anything else that you'd like to make sure that they're aware of Bright Star Care? Um, I really, I love our healthcare community here. I think it's, you know, I'm very new to it. I mean, I didn't grow up in it, so it was new. And I said the level of support that I get from other owners in this, um, from people like you, um, physicians, everyone, I think it's really great. And I, I love the thing that you're doing with bringing people together in our community. And I think it's very critical that we all remember that we're all in this for the right reasons. And, um, you know, I always say that cream rises to the top. And when you surround yourself with the people that are doing the right thing and, and that are really making a difference in our community, it, it makes all of us better. So that's, I think it's been very, very eye-opening about how wonderful our community truly is. Yeah, thank you. Las Vegas Hills, we strive to bring the healthcare community together each and every day. Uh, we've got groups that employ about 34,000 healthcare professionals that are actively involved in HEALS. So it's, uh, and it's, we appreciate everything that you do for us. If our audience wanted to get in touch with you, how do they do that? website um, www.brightstarcare.com West Central Las Vegas location our phone number is 702-982-2273 we answer our phone 24 hours a day very good well thank you all for joining us for another edition of Inside Medicine and we hope to see you back next week Thursday at 10 a.m. make it a great day